Um, I brought a group of photographs that represents some of the range of our collection. Oh, we're going backwards. Okay. Yeah, we should... yeah, can I start from the other end? This is one of the first Stieglitzes to enter our collection in 1924 when Stieglitz gave us 27 photographs by him, which was a, a great new step forward for our museum and I prefer the collecting of photography by museums in general. It's one of our masterpieces. It's, uh, of course, uh, one of the series of photographs that Stieglitz made of O'Keefe. Of her hands um, with a thimble uh, on some fabric, uh, probably on her lap, uh, he turned the photograph of course, to, um, uh, to vertically rather than horizontally. It uh, dates from 1919. It's a, a, a beautiful, beautiful print. It has incredible resonance. It has incredible elegance. It has wonderful mystery. Um, it is poetic and yet uh, real uh, about reality. Uh, it, uh, several years ago, the National Gallery invited a number of museums that had various Stieglitz <coughs> photographs to come together with their photographs. Uh, we all had six of the same images and look at them together. And I remember quite well sitting there in the group and Sarah Breeden <coughs> saying that this was the only print in which the needle actually showed in the print and wasn't scratched in. So we think it's exceptional for that reason as well. Um, it's one of my favorite works in the collection. No, no, no. Uh, secondly, this is our newest 19th century uh, purchase. I, uh, like, like Malcolm, I'm a big fan of early French photography. Our museum had a number of works by Nadar, but no major Nadar <coughs> portrait, and we purchased this at auction last fall. It's a, um, a portrait of the uh, utopian uh, street preacher, Jean Journet. Uh, it, uh, he was a well-known eccentric at the time uh, and a great friend of the photographer and of a number of art figures in the artistic community, including Courbet. Um, Courbet made a painting of him uh, from which there was a lithographic painting's lost. Nadar felt that the painting didn't express the passion of the subject, so he then made this photograph which definitely shows the passion of the subject as Journée <coughs> looks upward uh, as if to uh, expecting to receive, receive divine inspiration uh, in his uh, uh, robe, sort of uh, cloaked robe that makes him look, look like he uh, comes from uh, the Spanish Baroque. Uh, we uh, wanted not just any ordinary Nadar portrait, we wanted a pretty majestic Nadar portrait, one that was very expressive. Uh, you, it, it has uh, some condition issues, um, like Malcolm, I'm showing you ones that, uh, some things that weren't in perfect condition, but it does the trick for us. It has a, a, a loss in the upper right, um, which we've actually toned down in this slide so that you can see the image, um, uh, and it has a little bit of staining. Uh, but we think it's we we think it's pretty fabulous. Now well, let me see which one I know I'm supposed to go. Uh, I wanted to share with you one of the photographs in the Great Lane collection that is uh, uh, housed with us. This is of course Charles Sheeler's uh, crisscross conveyor. Is one of the most important Sheeler photographs, um, uh, uh, dating from 1927 from the Ford Motor Plant series. The Lane Collection uh, in Sonder Lane, as I think here today, um, is uh, uh, one of the great treasures of, of our museum. We are thrilled to be linked with the Lane Collection and to have access to it and um, um, to have Sandra connected with us. Uh, I thought I should show something in color, and this is one of our great um, color works from the collection. It is by Ellen Auerbach, the photographer who, with uh, Greta Stern, formed the group Ringel and Pitt in, in Germany in the 30s. Uh, after, when the war started and Auerbach departed, she made uh, a work on her own. This is a piece that she made on her own. It's a color carbo print dating from circa 1940. Um, it, it's about 8 by 10 inches. It's uh, uh, unique, of course. 
it, uh, it is uh, interesting to us because we don't have a lot of surrealist material in the collection. Um, we love the vibrant color of it. And it, uh, another thing that for us is important for acquisitions is we try to find connections with other things in the collection that even though we don't have a lot of surrealist material, this works well with um, this of their part key piece for us. Uh, and of course it fits in with other uh, figure works in the collection, uh, architectural works uh, in the collection, and things that relate to sort of the, the craft and the handmade um, in the collection. And the last one goes all the way back to the beginning. And I wanted to share with you one contemporary work. This is uh, one of our favorites. It, it is by Adam Foose, a large scale photogram that, um, uh, uh, you know, full size, that is of course unique, that was made by um, drops of water being uh, uh, dro uh, dropped into a tray of water with a sheet of paper underneath. Um, it is both simple and elemental and elegant and mysterious uh, at the same time. Um, evokes, uh, uh, evokes, uh, uh, makes you think about um, uh, uh, something so simple and evocative and, and um, direct uh, and it's another favorite of ours.